Well, welcome everybody. This is the, uh, the first series of videos in my first light and sick comparison. I did a, a quick intro as to uh, what and why I'm comparing these companies. And please go ahead and if you haven't seen that one, watch that video first, kind of gives you a little bit of background. But in order to keep these videos of a reasonable um, length of time, I'm gonna hop right in and start in on the comparison. Now, what I have in, or what I have on right now, is the Sitka Fanatic Series bib. This is Sitka's um, premier middle to late of the rut, middle to late rut, um, later November time frame in the Midwest piece. It's designed to keep you warm, keep you concealed, and let you spend the most time on stand during those most valuable days that you can. Uh, Sitka went with this uh, this this particular design and pattern about um, three years I think it has now since they redesigned the uh, Fanatic line with the new cuts, the new pieces, and the uh, new pattern, the Optifade 2 pattern. And I guess that's um, that's as good of a place as any to start. So we'll start on the camo on the outside, I guess work our way in on features. Now this is the um, Optifade Elevate uh, 2 um, or EV2 has been shortened. You'll commonly hear it called Pattern by Sitka. This is their whitetail tree stand pattern. Now it is um, in this particular piece. It has a Berber fleece type uh, outer gear or outer layer. So the um, the rectangular or the um, the blocks that make up these this pattern. It's kind of a, a digital pattern are blended and not as crisp, which to me is a good thing on the outside of this pattern. This pattern contains a lot of greens, grays, whites, a little bit of browns you can see in here, a little green um, of various shades. And I'll get close so you can kind of see this pattern here. As you can see, compared to, uh, to my hand, the color of my hand and the color of a red shirt I'm wearing, just to see that contrast. Now, I have worn uh, Optifade 2 in the tree. I have worn it on the ground, although it's not designed for that. Um, and the best I can say is that it is like any camo pattern, that if you if you stay still, it's not the pattern itself that uh, usually gives you away, it's the movement. So it will keep you concealed. This is where I break from a lot of people on the downside of what I, I don't think this is the best pattern for a tree stand at least not here in the Midwest, probably in the South as well. And here's why. Um, I think this pattern looks awesome when you are sitting in a tree and more like December, all the leaves are gone, it's gray out, there's a little bit of snow on the ground. And it, in that environment, it blends very, very well. Grays, whites, uh, overcast uh, gray sky, um, no no real vegetation to speak of or very limited vegetation to speak of uh, twigs and that kind of stuff against that it does a good job and this pattern does break up the human outline uh, and it does not tend to blob which has been the traditional um, downfall of a lot of commercial camos as they blob uh, turn into a dark spot as you get further away this doesn't do that however um, most studies I have read on deer and other game animals indicate or at least hint that although we'll never know exactly how they see or perceive color is that the color spectrum of blue they can identify to a limited extent. Now that is one of the reasons Hunter Orange doesn't scare them but that if that blue if they can pick out blue in my mind anything that's light blue as in grayish blue or even gray is closer to the spectrum of the few colors that they can pick out that's where I want to stay away from and again as I get closer as you can see this camo does have um, a grayish or even sometimes a blue tint when you're when you look at it especially if you film it and look back on film it has this a definite a blue tint at times uh, depending on what it's back to or how it's um, what's in front of it and so to me that is uh, a downside. I, I want to stay away from camo that has any kind of blue in it or any hints or hues or anything that's even close to blue. To me this camo has those colors in it so it's not my preferred camo pattern. So having said that, yes it'll work absolutely 
uh, for decades and decades and decades, flannel shirts worked and they would still will. Uh, movement mostly gives you away. But if you're paying premium price and part of the premium price you're paying is because they said that the research and development went into this pattern, then I want that pattern to stay away from blue, stay away from even grays if possible. Um, and that pattern does not do that. So on to some of the other features of this thing. So this is a, uh, as I said before, a Berber fleece or a fleece on the outside, heavy duty, I should say Berber, but a heavy duty fleece on the outside with a wind blocker membrane underneath that. Uh, 133 grams of prime off, I believe, beneath that. And then a, uh, like a micro fleece against your skin or against the base layer underneath. It combines for a very, very effective wind blocking piece and a piece that keeps you warmer than even a 133 grams or 130 grams of prime off um, you would think would. It keeps you very, very warm and it is extremely effective at blocking wind. Uh, I, I really like the way that this thing blocks the wind. I really like the way um, that it keeps you warm in cold and damp conditions. Now it is not waterproof, but it is very water resistant, meaning I have sat in the tree um, for, you know, for quite a while with a steady or a light rain, usually not a downpour. If it's, if it's pouring out, I'll have so a dedicated um, water, um, waterproof gear on. But you know, in those, those showers that catch you, you'll usually stay warm now, or stay dry, excuse me whether that's a result of all these different layers that it just absorbs and, and, and blocks that moisture from getting to your skin, or if there's the DWR of this is just that effective, I can't tell, or probably a combination of both, but it will keep you relatively dry. Um, dry enough that if, unless it's, I know there's gonna be a high probability of rain, I won't wear any or bring any rain gear with me if I'm wearing this piece. Uh, the next piece, next thing I'm going to talk about this is pocket layout. Um, by far from this and the sanctuary, that will be my next video, the sanctuary um, piece from First Light, the pocket layout is, on this piece is better. I really like all the pockets. You have pockets here, which are nice. You know, if you if it gets hot and you have the, the um, Fanatic coat on, you take that coat off, maybe you have the Fanatic hoodie underneath it, but it's tucked into these bibs and you want to keep your hands warm some nice high uh, pockets that way too if you're sitting down you know they're up here they're not not scratched down here you can keep them up here keep a release in your hand if you use a handheld release and they're easy to slip in and out of glove up draw shoot so uh, very very nice pockets up here the lower pockets so there's quite a few pockets on this piece uh, I don't know if I can maybe back up some my leg up here but these pockets they have a very um, a rubberized uh, feel on the snaps of the pockets so that they're quiet, that they're a quiet piece. And they have both um, vertical pockets on your thighs, which is nice because things aren't things won't tend to flop out. You can get to them easy they're, as you're sitting, they're right there, which is they're designed to do. If you're spending all day in a tree stand, you're gonna be sitting some. So the pocket layouts, there's pocket layouts on, um, on the side. They're very well done, very well thought out. I really think that first, or that, excuse me, Sika did, went above and beyond getting um, just excellent, excellent uh, layouts of pockets. So that is definite plus for this uh, piece. The pocket layout is phenomenal. Next up will be the zippers. Um, the zippers from the main zipper here in the front, that, oh, there's their double zippers, which uh, both companies use double zippers, but double zippers are almost a must at this price range and at, at these features you're expecting to pay. They all have very high quality zippers, never had an issue at all with uh, Sitka zip zippers. They have um, zippers that run almost the complete, they won't completely come up to the side, but they come up from, from hip all the way to uh, the ground, to the boot length. Allows you to open these up. One, if you're walking, you can open up one side, again, double zippered. You can open up one and, uh, you know, kind of create that opening in the middle of the leg to cool. And probably more importantly is they have, no matter how long or your boots are, you can open, unzip it and get it closed up around that boot so that you can, uh, that you're not trying to fight get, getting these bibs over your boot. So the zippers are very high quality. Um, 
you know, I've never had an issue with things getting wet inside of them. They're just well done, well built, um, secure zippers. And, you know, it's one of those small things that if you ever had a zipper break on you, you can, you know, you have a great piece of gear and the zipper keeps breaking or keeps sticking, then, then it's very annoying. And uh, First Light or Sitka, um, both companies, I haven't had issues with either one of those for their zippers. So um, the next piece, windproof. Now, of the two garments, or the two bibs, the Sanctuary and the uh, Fanatic, this is the only one that has a dedicated layer of wind blocking. And that is in the, uh, the um, wind stopper, the Gore wind stopper. And it works. It works very well, like I just explained. If there's a downside at all, um, and I can't tell if it's just because of that wind stopper membrane, I'm guessing it is, but this piece. By no means is it loud, but it will be louder than the Sanctuary. And I'll explain if I come closer to the mic. Get this. And that is, um, you know, I think that's a combination of the fleece here, the thick high uh, pile fleece that keeps you, that helps with the warmth and that mem wind member back it. Now, when you hear this, um, you know, on the video, no, I was standing right in front of a microphone when I was doing that. So it's not loud. I don't want to get that impression. It is perfectly quiet, enough quiet for um, any tree stand hunting I'd ever do. It wouldn't have bothered me, but I know some people are even more fanatical than I am about the noise. Um, and this, it has a little more sound than the Sanctuary. So a uh, great piece, articulation. You know, you can really bend down, move, move your knees up and down for as heavy and a thick of a piece as this is, the articulation is really, really good. Uh, you know, you don't want to go out probably and do a lot of wind sprints with it. One, because of the, uh, the heat you're going to retain. But two, I mean, it doesn't have that kind of mobi mobility, nor is it supposed to. But it has a lot for what, for a bib, for what you're getting. So for that warmth trappingness of this bib, you, you do get plenty of dexterity to climb any tree stands, to climb those hills, to walk in with stuff uh, on your back. So you're good there. Both pieces have, are very flexible for what they are. And this, I'd say even, they're very good pieces. <clears throat> I guess that brings me to the suspenders part, which is a big part of any bib, a uh, high quality bib. So I'll get in close to the camera and you can see the suspenders here. So, there they are. They are elastic. Um, it looks like two, there's three rows or three ribbons of this elastic stitch together. They're very comfortable on the shoulders. Uh, I don't really even know they're there. They're done well. They, um, they are thin though. I will say they're noticeably thinner than the uh, First Light Sanctuary uh, suspenders. I personally prefer the thicker material of the first light suspenders. They feel more durable to me. But if you don't like anything on your shoulder at all, or if it bothers you, you might prefer the thinner um, suspender. But for me, I prefer the thicker, and I will say is better material uh, used for the Sanctuary series. The Sanctuary does not, as I'll go over here in a little bit, does not have this, they're not as elastic but they are thicker um, and they are equally padded or comfortable. The other part about this suspenders, not just these suspenders, but about any suspenders um, going to the new style from Sitka Gear. Uh, with, the, with the rise in popularity of Ozonics, Scent Crusher, Ozone producing units, this elastic, any elastic at all, can be affected by high um, amounts of ozone. But I think because these are very exposed, or there's not a lot but the elastic rubber um, to these suspenders, I've seen it several times now where they've been in a bag or a tote uh, in an uh, ozone generating machine and they have destroyed them or they've frayed away and caused them to be brittle and they just fall apart. So much so that Sika specifically puts a warning that they will not warranty against um, stuff in suspenders, rubber parts in a ozone producing or an ozonics bag or a scent crusher bag or any of them um, because of the the amount of destruction and brittleness it causes to the suspenders and other rubberized parts of the gear. 
So that is something to know. I do not know if that's been an issue at all with first light suspenders. I've never heard of it, but um, I do know it is an issue here. So to, to uh, kind of wrap up this piece versus the, the sanctuary piece, I'll, I'll end it like this. The pocket layouts on the Fanatic are superior to the sanctuary. It has a dedicated wind membrane piece. Um, I've never felt the wind the way that the, the sanctuary is layered, and I'll explain that when I get in there. I, it has a very good wind blocking or wind resistant, but it does not have a wind blocking layer. This does. So I would have to rate that the blocking of the wind has to be superior in the Fanatic. Um, even though I've never had it been a problem in the Sanctuary, but in the Fanatic it has to be superior. The, uh, the zippers are probably the same. I'd say the zippers are a tie. The warmth level is very, very close. Um, I'll get into some of those features in the, uh, in the Fanatic, but the warmth layers are very, very close. The suspenders I would rate as a negative um, for what you're buying and the fact that they're so easily destroyed in an ozone producing machine. I do not like that. Um, if you do use that, make sure an ozone either make sure you're taking uh, the back of these suspenders off. And I'm not even sure if you can totally do that. They will not come off at the top. So you either have to zip up around them or just do not use an ozone producing machine on your outer layer, which is probably the best bet. The pattern, once again, the pattern is not my favorite. Um, I really like this pattern when it's done properly on bows and rifles and elevate too. It looks really good. But the blues and the grays, the hues in this, if there's any chance at all that wildlife can see blues or grays, I want to stay away from it. And as you can tell, this has a lot of that in it. So that is how I feel on the pattern. But again, uh, pattern is the last thing probably most people should, should worry about if it has all the other features you want in it. Overall, an outstanding, outstanding piece of gear. A very expensive piece, it is. There's no way around it, but it, you should buy it and it should last you forever and it should keep you extremely warm. Um, the materials, Sitka, all their quality, all their gear, very good, very, very top level material. This piece, along with, along with the Fanatic top and this fleece on the outside, definitely has a tendency to collect burrs. If you walk through briars and burrs, it will get, it'll pick up um, burrs, seeds, any of that, like a magnet picks it up completely and fast and it seems like it just flocks to you and uh, this, is a, this is a brand new set so it's never seen the outside so it, but I, the other other piece I've had it just it, you will get them in this thing and it's hard to get them out because of this uh, on the flip side of that this fleece makes it a very durable piece um, more so than the than the sanctuary as far as uh, rips and tears. So it's a very, it's a durable outside, but it also collects a ton of burrs. So overall, an outstanding, outstanding piece from Sitka, uh, like all their gear. I'm going to end the video here, grab the sanctuaries and uh, do a comparison of them. So uh, stay tuned.